might not know this, but you can create Hollywood level visual effects right from home. In this video, let me show you my process using Blender and a few other programs to get stunning results that you see on the big screen. I'll walk you through the entire process, everything from camera tracking to the CGI and then compositing everything together for a final result. Before we get into that, I just wanted to talk about today's sponsor, Motion Array. Now, as a full-time freelance artist and content creator, I'm always looking for ways to save time in my workflow. That's where Motion Array comes in. They offer a ton of great assets, everything from video templates, stock footage, music, sound effects, you name it. My personal favorite feature is the huge plugin library for video editing programs with over 50 plugins to choose from. Whether I need to do some green screen or add some post-processing such as distortion or grain, Motion Array has me covered. If you know anything about video editing, you know how tedious the process can be to get the right effects and look that you're going for. The plugins make it super Super easy to drop in effects so you can deliver amazing content fast. It really is the one-stop shop for any asset that you might need and it's really saved me a ton of time when creating content. Motion Array is membership based so you gain access to everything with no additional fees. It's super flexible whether you just need it for a month or a year they got a plan for you. They even provide a plan for small teams in case you need to integrate Motion Array in a VFX or editing pipeline. If you're ready to speed up your workflow with Motion Array I'll have an affiliate link down in the description and pinned comment below to get started. This not only helps support me here on the channel but there is also a $50 discount if you sign up with the annual plan. So anyways, thank you so much again for Motion Ray for sponsoring this video. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump into it. So first things first is jumping into the camera tracking process. Uh, we need to basically get our camera in the real world and put it into a 3D environment so that we can match our CGI motion. So I'm going to be using a program called Synthize today. It is a uh, dedicated program for camera tracking, and I just find it's very uh, simple and easy to use and also gives me better tracking results than anything like After Effects or Blender. And so you can see here is the default thing. All I have done is basically just hit this auto button up here, which I love this program because it does all of the heavy lifting for me. It basically just adds a ton of tracking dots uh, for camera tracking. Specifically, the nice thing about this clip is there is a lot of parallax data. And so when the camera moves, there's a lot of points uh, closer to the camera and then there are also points in the background and so that tells the uh, program basically a lot of information to see where the points move in 3D space and so that's really nice and uh, now I'm not going to be explaining everything I have done inside of this uh, program but uh, I might have a future dedicated tutorial uh, later on about how to use this program anyways uh, what we can do after that is we want to go ahead and get our first solve and so that'll be in this tab over here and we go through a whole kind of cleanup section process where we try to get this number as low as possible this is our solve error and the lower that number is the more accurate the solve is and we uh, need an accurate solve just to place some CGI into our scene and so that is the whole kind of process there uh, once we're done with the solve section we want to go ahead and establish a ground plane and so ground planes are very important in visual effects just because it tells uh, where the CGI is in relation to the ground and it uh, if we had stuff on the ground it'll be important to have the uh, that CGI stick on the ground and not float in midair uh, in this specific shot I didn't have any CGI that was gonna be touching the ground uh, however it's still just a good practice to set a ground plane and so as you can see I went through the entire process of of uh, setting our ground plane and if I kind of zoom in real tight here you can see all of our points kind of stick on that ground there and so yeah so that's pretty much the whole process the other thing I like about this program is it's super easy to work with blender all you have to do is come up here to file and then export and there's a blender python script that you can render out and we'll uh, update that into blender and it'll be super easy process there next let's jump inside of the world of cgi inside of blender now blender is the program that i use for my 3d cgi there are plenty of other programs but this is the one i like to use since it's free and so easy to use uh, anyways we can see up here what we need to do to import in that camera tracking data is come up to scripting and then this is where you want to load in that uh, python file that it rendered out out of synthize and literally it's so simple you can just go ahead and click this run script button and it'll go ahead and place a camera in your scene and the thing i also like about synthize is it go, uh, goes ahead and makes some camera tracking markers so as you can see on the ground uh, we can have some of these selected and these are actually uh, points in the 3d world where those points would be in the footage and so it's just a good representation of where those points are in the 3d space and so i just have a little collection up here so i can turn those off when i'm not needed so yeah so next thing is of course adding all of these CGI buildings and stuff. Uh, now in CGI, uh, you know, stuff that I do, I don't really model or texture myself. I'm very asset based. And so the uh, program I've been using to get all my assets recently for shots like this is a program called Cargo by Kitbash, if you guys have ever heard of that. So Kitbash is a website that provides a ton of awesome uh, asset libraries uh, and kits that you can use to download. They have a ton of different kits. Uh, Cargo is a subscription service where you can have access to all of these specific kits. The only downside in 
my experience is that you can't actually download the FBX files. And so say if you're working on a pipeline, say you're going from Blender to Maya to Unreal, et cetera, you won't have those actual FBX files. Uh, how it basically works is you uh, click on whatever kind of uh, model that you want. So we'll say this vending machine, and then we have a target software. And so we need a Blender 4.1 is what I use. And then the texture shot size, I usually, uh, for models that are kind of further away, just stick with 4K JPEG. But uh, depending on uh, how high fidelity you need it, you can download other textures as well. And then all you need to do is download those. And then uh, once you finally have some downloaded, it'll come to this section right here. And then we can just go ahead and import that in the scene. So I have this dump dump dumpster right here that I want to import into the scene. All I need to do is click import and then give it a bit and it'll automatically uh, load inside of Blender uh, when it's ready. So as you can see, we have this dumpster in here now. And so that is how I did all of the buildings. You can see back here, we have all of the different buildings. And so what I did to actually create the city is I put all of these buildings right here into their own collection, uh, which is this uh, cargo buildings collection. And then when I come back to the camera view, I have a plane, just a simple plane up here uh, where it has a particle system. And so that is basically how I'm developing the city is just using all of these assets as particles in this plane. You could totally use geometry nodes. However, I'm not very uh, well versed in that so i just use particle settings for me uh, but as you can see we have hair set to advance and just a lot of settings here random rotation all of that stuff random scale uh, and then down here we have some children as well because i didn't want to have to render out all those buildings so we have uh, zero on the display port and then uh, we have five uh, render amount. And so that basically means that each of these buildings are going to be five children particles around it. And I made sure the radius is big enough so that we don't tell that they are duplications of buildings and everything. And now I do have some uh, few very specific buildings in here. If I kind of uh, mute that, you can see I have two unique buildings in there. And that's again to just break up that city, to make it a little bit more interesting there. Uh, so the final thing that I wanted to talk about in uh, this one is I wanted to do some fog into the scene uh, just to give it a little bit more atmosphere now we do have to watch out because this footage does not have any fog or haze you know other than really far in the background and so we'll probably have to add that in a little bit in compositing uh, so i have two basically fog planes here uh, so if I select one of these, you can see here is the node layout. I basically just have a noise texture plugged into a color ramp, plugged into a volume scatter, uh, which is super simple, super basic, uh, just getting us some nice kind of uh, cloud texture to break up uh, some of the city. And so again, you can see it's very foggy. We'll need to add that into the base plate to match it as well as possible. And so, yeah, so that is the main thing. Uh, the only other thing I want to point out just really quickly is I do have a kind of unique lighting setup right now inside of Blender. I've been experimenting around with a uh, custom plugin for Blender blender it's called the physical starlight and atmosphere mod uh i'll have a link to that down below where you can check that out but all that does if we go into the world settings you can see we have this new uh, kind of atmosphere section and the nice thing is it's uh, basically a point sun in our world just like a sunlight in blender uh, it's the exact same thing and if we rotate this around say i want to rotate this down it'll actually change the lighting based on the rotation angle so now you can see it's uh, nighttime basically and so that's just really cool i like playing around with that and getting uh, realistic light values inside of blender i just find it's really useful and renders so much faster than hdr lighting especially for a scene like this okay so inside blender i went ahead and just rendered that overnight it took a little bit uh, but as you can see we have this result as uh, kind of our cgi pass and so now we have to take this result and then put it back with the footage and make sure it's as realistic as possible and so that is the compositing process Okay, so now for compositing, there are many great programs out there. Uh, After Effects is one of the most widely used programs, but today I'm actually going to be using Nuke X, which is my uh, compositing program of choice. It's the industry standard program and it's node based, which I really like because it's very visual and I'm a huge visual person when it comes to this stuff. So as you can see over here, here is the default CGI that we placed over top of our footage uh, straight out of Blender. This, if you're rendering from Blender, this is basically the result that you're going to get. And as you can see, it doesn't look too realistic. It doesn't look like it matches. The contrast is a little bit off. Uh, you know, there are tons of stuff wrong with it. So let's kind of break down how I uh, kind of think about a shot like this and uh, show you guys exactly what I did. So first of all, let's just deal with the CGI since that's most likely what you're going to be starting on. So first of all, I want to go ahead and try to match the values as closely as possible to my base plate. And so those are these numbers right here, just some uh, basic color correction. And then on top of that, we can see if I kind of on and off uh, the CGI, we can see some haze is actually going over top of the mountains. And so I kind of want to not have that. I want the haze to be behind the mountains for now. We'll add some uh, different haze in later. So what I actually did over here is I created a new mask uh, for my mountain. Uh, so as you can see, if 
I come over here, this is the mass I developed. And so all of this white area stuff is going to be where the city is going to be. And so everything in the black is where it's going to cut off. And so that is nice because if I come down here, that is what these two nodes are right here. So if I uh, turn those on, now you can see just the areas where the mountains are covering the stuff. Uh, that is where the CGI is no longer seen. So that is very nice. And then the final thing I did for the CGI, just to blend it in ever so slightly, is to add a little bit of light wrap. Uh, you can see, especially on the buildings at the bottom, a uh, super subtle kind of effect of uh, that blue sky kind of coming in at the very bottom. So next thing we need to tackle is, of course, the atmosphere. We need to add some haze and stuff back here. It was super simple for this clip. All I needed to do was just do some color correction and place a mask over there. Uh, so now we have this look. And then something was feeling a little bit off to me. I didn't like that the uh, clouds and stuff back here were so clear. And so I went ahead and just found a PNG online and just added some clouds and tracked that into the scene. And so now you can see we actually have some white clouds in the background, and I think it gives a cool little touch to it. Okay, so this is the result that we're getting. This is much more match uh, compared to the original that we had. Uh, the final thing that I like to do is a whole post-processing uh, process where I kind of add some stuff. Uh, now, depending on the CGI and your client that you're working with, uh, you sometimes don't want to do this since they want such a clean result and they uh, might do some like color correction or something on their end. But since this was my shot, I kind of wanted to add some post processing inside of it. So we'll just go down the list. So first of all, I did some sharpening uh, just ever so slightly, just sharpen it again, not trying to blow it up too much in case in color. I do want to add some more sharpening there. But as you can see, just really subtle, kind of making those details stand out a little bit more. Uh, next, we have this eye blur section right here. All that is is just a uh, Kind of fading in uh, the top here and so just giving it kind of a nice little effect right there kind of draws the eye in again nothing too uh, kind of complex or anything I just wanted it very subtle to kind of draw the eye to this tower right here is kind of where I wanted the focal point to be uh, next we added some lens distortion kind of self-explanatory there just kind of distorting out the edges like any lens would and then finally this node right here is just a node where I'm adding in some bloom and some chromatic aberration so if you kind of zoom in here, you can notice we're getting a lot of blue values. Um, that's basically chromatic aberration at the edges. And then we're also getting some bloom. And so uh, just adding a lot more kind of color and stuff into that. I wanted more of a softer image for this one. And so that is how I'm kind of adding that in. And so, yeah, so with all of that, uh, all of those press processing, it really took this shot uh, to be much more lively, in my opinion. And of course, we're going to push it a little bit more in color, but as much as we can do in compositing is my goal. And so finally, we have to talk about how to add grain back in because every single footage that you shoot, no matter what camera you have, is always going to have grain or noise in it. And so we have to go ahead and add that in. So what I did is I actually uh, came up to the very top and I actually denoised my footage. And so again, this uh, footage didn't have a lot of noise. And so if I kind of turn this on and off, uh, you might not be able to tell a lot, but it is uh, changing a little bit here and there. Uh, so that is denoised. And the reason I'm doing that is because my CGI is also denoised. So basically everything that we're doing in the compositing section is denoised. And so we're uh, doing CGI and that is denoised. And so then at the final step, after we combine everything and do all of our effects, that's where we need to come back and add that noise back in. And so inside of Nuke, uh, the way to do that is just a third party uh, add on called Daz Grain. And so this is my uh, basically way again it's super super subtle so if we kind of on and off this uh, you're not going to be able to tell too much but uh, again it's just kind of a good rule of thumb to kind of add noise back in just to make it as realistic as possible okay so that's pretty much everything I did in compositing here is the before and then here's after you can just see how much it's changed the actual clip and makes it much more visually appealing uh, this is what Hollywood films use a lot and it's kind of the final process in the whole visual effects pipeline Anyways, I hope you learned a thing or two that you can apply to your own work. Blender is a great, great program for visual effects, and in combination with some other programs, you can achieve some amazing work. Thanks again to Motion Ray for sponsoring this video. If you are interested, again, I'll have a link down in the description below for you to check it out. Anyways, thank you so, so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.